here actually four sheets out of that. Could you let uh, those gentlemen know that we're busy? So did you want to hear the recording too? Hey, sir. I'll give you the, Sorry, the sir, website the address. Calls and for, for the recording of what transpired between you and the deputy, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, actually, if you give me the website after we're done, sure. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Um, and again, no coffee, bro? No, I don't like coffee. You sure about that? I don't like coffee. You like coffee? It's 37 degrees this morning, you know what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I like the cold though. Oh, you? Yeah. I like the extreme weather. I don't get it while you said what? You said it was on MySpace? Yeah. MySpace.com. Then you put a forward slash behind the top. There's a, a subdirectory. And then it's uproar. U P R O A R is one word. U P R. O A R O A R publishing. Okay. And then, uh, you know what? It might be on another one. So there's two of them. So write that one. That one's one, and the other one is uh, myspace.com. And the um, address is hate crimes blatant and in public. That's a one word. Hate, hate crimes. Blatant and in public. And in public. Okay. Yeah, it's all spelled out just like that. But it's all one word when you uh, log into the URL. Your first name is Ray? Yeah. Last name is Brown. Brown. Your date of birth, Mr. Brown? 81656. And I have an address of 3018 West 76th Street. All right. And uh, I have a home phone number which. Apparently you're getting the messages. I got so that's, message. a good, that's a good uh, number. Yes, it is. Okay. And um, this occurred on November eleventh. No, the fifth. Or November fifth. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the, the actual month. Um, at about it says here about zero nine hundred hours. It was uh, exactly whatever was on that. Thing it was the around the incident with the with the uh, officer. In my opinion, I mean, when it was in the hallway, mm -hmm. that was uh, approximately 9:15. Okay. But in my view, the officer was involved from the start before because they when were waiting. The they were waiting for me to get to the court. Right? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask questions, and uh, first I'm going to give you a chance to, to say, and then I'll just ask the questions. Okay. Let you know that in my inquiry that I have here, mm -hmm. I'm a fact finder, right. and I give your statement, mm -hmm. and I give the deputy statement, mm -hmm. and then from there it goes to my captain, mm -hmm. and then my captain uh, will make uh, whatever decision he's going to make. If he needs mm -hmm. to push it up, it's pushing it up, but um, I am uh, unbiased as it, as it goes. Okay. Thank okay. You. I appreciate that. Not a problem. Um, so we'll start. Okay, my name is Sergeant Naranjo. Uh, it is um, 0930 hours. The date is 12-8-09. And I'm speaking to uh, Mr. Ray Brown involving a uh, complaint that was lodged on uh, Deputies um, Perez, Deputy Hill, and Deputy Flores was the third deputy that was involved uh, in this matter in Department uh, 37. Is that correct, Mr. Brown? Yeah, that's right. Okay, can you tell me what happened in uh, Department 37? Um, I had a hearing at that time, and um, I'm conducting case number BC-4. You can move a little closer oh. and I can make sure okay. we... Thank you. I'm uh, conducting case number BC-409950. Um, I think that was my purpose for being at the courtroom that day. Are you acting in pro per? Yes. Okay. And that's involving Judge McDonald? Or Judge O'Donnell? The judge, yes. She's the presiding judge at this time. Okay. And have you been in court before? Yeah, this was approximately the fourth or fifth hearing that has been conducted 
set forth by uh, who I call the quasi-defendants. In okay. my opinion, they just walked in off the street and declared themselves as defendants in this case. Um, in this, and in all appearances, were they all, did you make an appearance on all matters, on all uh, dates before and in front of Judge O'Donnell? Yeah, so everything, that, everything that was set forth, the, the previous five hearings, four or five hearings that was set forth by the defendants were all heard by Judge O'Donnell, and I was there to uh, state my case okay. at that time. What happened in the courtroom? And what happened in the, why don't you just start from the beginning, go to the end, and then okay. we'll fill in the blanks. Okay, my, my, uh, my case was called forth to be heard. Uh, all the parties made their statements, and they, uh, uh, the judge said that, uh, okay, uh, I guess this is their little incantation or quote phrase that said, we're done. Which means she concluded the case at this time and continued it. This is November the 11th. The 5th. No, I'm sorry, I keep doing that. I'm looking okay, at so November yes, 5th. Anyway, so uh, the hearings were over that day and were con continued to today, okay. basically. And um, after that, I walked out the courtroom and uh, that was it. Now, uh, like I said, I was. Uh, when we all, the, uh, me, the uh, officer, there was just one who was, was in the courtroom, and the uh, opposing counsel, we all exited the, the, uh, the courtroom at the same time. It might be important to say that the officer and myself entered the court at the same time and uh, exited the court at the same time. Anyway, I was involved in a conversation with uh, defense counsel, or the opposing counsel, when the uh, officer got into our conversation and he said that I was handling my case all wrong and that's uh, how the conversation started and uh, you have to look in the transcripts to see where the uh, excitation to violence began because it didn't come from me so um, anyway uh, what I got from the information I could get from the officers was that uh, the judge filed some kind of uh, statement with the sheriffs saying that the, that I was uh, talking above my voice, screaming or yelling or whatever, and, and uh, being disruptive or creating a terrorist menace in the court or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess at this point in my testimony that you're recording, we need to see exactly what Judge O'Donnell said. So apparently she has something on file with you guys according to uh, this officer who... Uh, Indicating deputy, senior bonus, but deputy no, Diggs? No, not Diggs, but it was another officer uh, who uh, confiscated my video recording, erased all my uh, recordings. He was the one that said, well, John filed some kind of uh, written complaint. So, like I said, after this, I need to, at this point, I need to see what she said, because I can't guess of what she said and just, I mean, the, the, the officer said that she said, right? Mm -hmm. So let's hear so Let's see what she wrote down. And then, uh, she didn't write anything down. Oh, she did? No, she did not. Okay, what was Also, the also be advised that, that um, you cannot, and we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. you cannot record in a courthouse. I, I know what you were doing, and I know that you were, you know, and in your, in your frame of mind that you're trying to safeguard your safety. It's accounting for myself. Basically. But you, you cannot. Yeah. In the well, future, I, in the future, I'm, I'm, I'm reminding you that there's, there's. You know, I don't care if I go to jail, or whatever. It's as long as I can. Okay, but I'm not going to resist. Mr. Brown, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just interjecting as, as your statement goes. Yeah. I mean, um, everybody knows that. That you cannot. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, in a courthouse, it's out on the, it's a posted, and mm -hmm. since you cannot bring recording devices in a courthouse. Okay. Let's just let you know for the future. Yeah, I know. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, it's, to me, that's a, that's just a way that. People like me can't account for themselves. Well, so. it's it's just it's a court rule, and everybody abides by it. It's not set forth by the sheriff's department. Yeah, well, it's if I didn't have a recording, I would have nothing. It would mean nothing for me to. to you would have this what you're doing right now, which is still. Well, I'm, we're going to continue on. We're not going to debate it. Okay, I'm just, I'm just uh, this okay, is the fact. I'm, I'm giving you. Okay. okay, you tell me that. I have exactly. Chance. I don't care. I'm going to account for myself. Okay, who but I'm letting you know. Okay. okay. Now, moving on, you. Uh, um, so you say the judge called you, called the deputy to the courtroom. You were advised yeah. by that would be no, senior bonus one Moreno. 
What's his name, Marina? Right. Is that the guy? Okay, so he's the one that said that she uh, he investigated some paperwork that she filed. So I guess we need to get with well, him and find out what's going on, if what he says is true or not. Well, let's move on. Now you're talking to the deputy outside in the hallway. Mm -hmm. What happens then? So, uh, they were prone to violence from the start. And then Could you I, describe what, what do you mean by prone to violence? Well, they pulled out their, they uh, made me leave the courtroom. They had no, I mean, they made me leave the courthouse. They okay. had no basis for that. Okay. I was minding my own business having a conversation with the, the opposing counsel. This officer said he had things to do. Uh, why he's hanging around trying to start a conversation with me only means that he was just trying to incite some type of violence. Okay. Basically. And then, Regardless of how the, uh, I mean, he started off nice, you know, saying this. Here, you talking about Deputy Perez? Yeah, the first one. Yeah, he says, well, you're handling your case the wrong way. And I'm like, who, me? Or what are you talking about? And then he says, well, I know nothing about your case. You know what I'm saying? You hear him say that on the recording. I mean, what are you saying that? You know, how are you saying I'm handling my case wrong? And then he said, well, you're in the courtroom, you're talking loud and being disruptive. And I'm like, well, you were in the courtroom the whole time, and you never acted that way. You never, uh, you never invoked your police privilege to uh, respond in that manner to what you're alleging. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess uh, it must have thought I was just stupid retarded or something. They could tell me anything and I believe it. Mm -hmm. So um, when I started challenging them, I said, well, I guess that's where the uh, excitation of violence started because he made that false allegation against me. And then the, my uh, response after that was to make him uh, change his statement since, you know, mm -hmm. I knew he was there the whole time and he didn't witness what he claimed. Then what happened? And I said, well, you know, you were there the whole time. You didn't act like there was any disruption. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Okay. And so then he just kept going on like, you know, he was in a, in a state of selective memory or selective uh, mindset to, okay. uh, to say, well, we don't care what you did. You didn't disrupt the court, but we can interpret it like you did. You know what I'm saying? That's basically, to me, the uh, whole premise of misconduct is integral in this case where uh, these people like cops or other types of uh, public uh, people that judges, teachers, stuff like that, they think they can just uh, make false claims and false statements, you know, based on their position, you know, when you challenge them on on those false claims and false statements, and you know, the first thing they do is try to pass their buck to their superiors. Did he raise his voice or yell at you? We weren't yelling at each other. I mean, we're like, you know, we were calmly talking back we're, and forth. We were calmly talking. You'll hear it on the recording. Okay. We're calmly talking back and forth. When did these other two deputies come? Well, they were both standing on each end of the hall. Like I said, you know, the whole thing, the, evidently, I'm going to leave it at the judge to say, well, the judge called the sheriff to anticipate my appearing at this court hearing. Okay. The sheriff was, that Sheriff Perez was there standing at Department 37. You know, when I hit the uh, fourth floor, he got on his radio, uh, signaled uh, O'Donnell that I was on the floor. When I came into the courtroom, O'Donnell was standing in the doorway of her chambers, and she nodded back to the deputy and like, yeah, this is him. And so uh, the deputy was there specifically to monitor my movements. What did he do? Where did he position himself? He stood right behind me. Okay. And that was like another type of incantation motif, you know, whoever their secret people are, the suspicious, in my opinion, in part of the, uh, in terms of Department 37 and their function as a okay. public. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for you. Yeah, as, as far as a, as a, a, a public, uh, entity where people can hear their cases heard. Okay, Mr. Brown, now now there's three deputies contacting you in the hallway and they're asking you to leave the courthouse. What happens then? I don't know, leave the courthouse and they follow me. They follow you? Did they follow you or? They follow me. Did you walk backwards? Yeah, I did walk okay. backwards. Why would that be? Well, they were following me. They told me to leave the court when I was leaving the court. Why would they bother me? For one thing, A, they didn't have any right or premise or basis or legal intelligence to, to say you need to leave the court. His thing was like the courthouse. The courthouse basically. He said, We don't want you going back in thirty seven. Well I gotta get in there. Why can't I go back in there? 
and this is a public court. Everybody can sit in anybody's courtroom. By law, you should know that you're a police officer. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, she doesn't want you back in there. Well, nonetheless, I didn't have anything. I had other business anyway. You know, what makes you think I want to go back in there anyway? You know what I'm saying? So you walked out of the courthouse backwards? What was the reason for the backwards walk? Because they were following me. You were afraid that they were, were you, in, were you, are you implying that they, you were afraid that they were going to do something to harm you? Well, they pull out their, their taser and their sticks. I sticks? Mean, I mean, they, they, they have like a telescope, a telescope and whatever, you can do it like that. Who's he? Who had that one? The black guy. Deputy Hill. He's the one that put out the baton. The other guy had a flashing taser gun, I guess what it is, with lights flashing on the side mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. And basically what they were trying Did to Did they threaten you with it? Did they tell you, I will taser you, I will hit you with this baton? You hear it on the recording. No, I'm asking you right. Yeah. I said, well, I said, what you want to do, shoot me? He said, yeah. Something like that, you know what I'm saying? I don't remember exactly, but that was their intent to uh, create this type and of... And ultimately, system. you went out of the courthouse without yeah. a problem? They were the problem. I mean, but you walked out without incident, without a problem? Not on my part. Okay. Did they strike you or attack you anytime? As you walked out? I said, the, the guy here was talking about, you better, I don't know, you got to hear the, the crap they were talking. You okay. know what I'm saying? But, you know, I walked backwards because evidently the reason they wanted to follow me and the reason that the whole reason the cops were there in the first place was to create a negative stigma around my person. Okay. That was the whole reason. It's another part of this uh, misconduct, this, uh, this co misconduct regarding you know, public entities. Okay, but ultimately you exit the courthouse without incident. So I'm going to ask you some questions now it about. Was an they, did they, they strike you? Did they hit you? Did you hit them? I couldn't hit. Them. I had a, you I, had a box now. I had a box well, land. Oh, well, so you're out of the courthouse. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go back and answer, uh, and I'll explain some things and I'll sure. ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, we do not contract out of that court. That is, it's a civil court, mm -hmm. and uh, what we do is, if we're called by a particular judge, uh, we respond to deputy to that courtroom just as security, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the information we had was Judge O'Donnell's requesting a bailiff for security in the courtroom, mm -hmm. which we have 99 courts, and mm -hmm. we're able to provide security in any one of those courts. That's fine. Um, so that's it. We're not uh, interested. So who did she, did she, so who did she, she contacts the bailiff's office, mm -hmm. and we send a deputy down there. Okay, but what we need to, to clarify here is that uh, who was she specifying as far as the security risks? Because during the previous well, that's what I'm trying to get to the previous five hearings. What's what I'm trying to get to? Okay. Uh, during these hearings, uh, information that we have is you tend to be disruptive. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's all. We're there to make sure that you have your time in the court. We're not there to intimidate you, and we're there to allow you to, to speak in front of the judge. Now, information I have is that after your case was concluded with the judge, you continue to argue the case in front of the judge. Argue your case. Argue meaning speak your, your, your mind for your case. Mm -hmm. Okay, and at that point, the judge indicated to the deputy that your time was done and that you should be allowed to exit the courtroom, which you did without a problem. The deputy went outside. Now, information I have also is that you were very loud outside of the court room to the point that a clerk in the courtroom requested Deputy Perez was talking to you mm -hmm. and you guys were having your discussion and a clerk called mm -hmm. and said to send back up for this deputy because you were being too loud outside in the hallway. Mm -hmm. So that's why the other two deputies came. Deputy Perez was the only bit deputy that was there. And the second part of that is Judge O'Donnell asked the deputies to move you down the hallway because you were being too loud mm -hmm. and you were disrupting the court. Mm -hmm. um, outside, you were loud. You specifically were loud. And what do you say to that? To all these issues that I bring up. You know what? That's why I didn't call you back. You know what I'm saying? Because basically... Well, I'm asking... Am I, am I, if, see... I'm giving you information I understand that's, what you're that's saying. unbiased. I understand. And I'm asking you to, to saying, give you an opportunity to explain okay. each one. Okay, well, basically the... The recording speaks for itself. You know? Well, I have the recording, and now we're also recording now. Mm -hmm. So my first question to you, were you speaking to the judge loudly after your case was uh, over? Uh, no. Well, no, no, you didn't? I did not. Did you... Uh, I'll tell you exactly what well, I'll tell you exactly what Mr. I Brown, I, I gave you a chance to talk, and now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask you questions. You can answer them fully and completely. In the hallway, were you calm and quiet, or were you loud in the hallway? 
uh, we were all talking at the same level. Were all you? Was would you think that it would be loud enough that a judge would send a no? A, a, no. It's ask crowded, you to move. As crowded and, and as many people as in that courtroom, all she had to shut, she could just hear us okay. talking. Um, what do you say to the fact that you were loud? enough for the clerk to think the deputy needed backup and call for help? Did you think that was an issue? Uh, like I said, we were all talking at the same level and they were in the courtroom. Yeah, and they what were I'm asking is the question. No, is I'm just saying to, logically and just so you can understand it, if they're, they're having a case in the courtroom, they're talking in the courtroom, mm -hmm. there's uh, crowds of people outside in the hallway. You know, how she can distinguish us being too loud is, is, is my point. So no, that, that has nope, to be the answer is no. Why. Did you move forward with your box on at least two occasions towards Deputy Perez? Oh, that's a lie, too. That's a lie? Yeah. You never moved forward? Move forward towards him. Move forward, forward towards him. What does that mean? Move forward towards him. It's, it's, it's exactly what it means. You're having a discussion, you're upset, and you move forward towards him quickly. Okay, let me see. Did you, did you not? Yes or no? It's, a, it's yes not or no. a yes or no question, because let me position this. Okay, you got a cop on this side, you got a cop standing in front of me, and you got a cop standing on this side. Mm -hmm. They're telling me to leave the program. So I pick up my box. And I leave this one, so apparently I walk towards this cop that's standing on the side of me. So if you want to say it that way, that's fine. But well, if you're saying that I move towards the cops holding a box with a thousand pages of documents in my hand and intended to threaten the cop, then that's a blatant evil lie. If that's, that's, if that's, that's a lie. If that's the implication. And you're saying no. No, right. That's, that's what I'm saying. If that's the implication, then no. Okay. And you didn't do this on more than one occasion? <laughs> it's a yes or no question as well. Uh, no. Okay. And then you backed up out of the courthouse uh, for your safety, you say. Did you make any comments? No, they wanted to create a stigma around... Uh, Did you make any comments to the deputies as you were backing away? Yeah, we well, the conversation continued. It never stopped until I left the courtroom. Okay. And uh, so what you're saying is during the entire time that you're having a discussion with deputy, you are calm and just stating your case. That's right. You're not uh, That's right. challenging not, in any manner. Yeah, I'm not a poop, but I'm not weak in the brain or anything. I know how to challenge mm -hmm. people. I mean especially in terms, I mean, if they're lying, uh, you know, I'll have to participate in that. Have you been disrupted in the court in the past? No. That would cause the judge to ask for a, a bailiff to come down there? No, and she's trying to silence my testimony and violate my rights. So, so you've never been disruptive in the past? No, I have not. Okay. Senior Diggs, do you have anything? Uh, no. Um, by the way, Senior Bonus One Deputy Lawrence Diggs is also in this uh, interview. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Brown, I have nothing else to say. I appreciate your uh, coming here. I And I did. I actually called you four times, um, and we talked about that. Uh, you didn't respond to any one of the four messages, but did you indicated that you got each one of the messages. Why yeah. didn't you contact us? Because uh, I knew that uh, I know this is just all a game, and uh, as long as I got uh, my uh, complaint on file, it's more uh, about, you know, eliminating you guys from my life because but my whole source of problems in this instance uh, comes from uh, the cops and the courts and stuff. So I got my receipt and it's more to keep my head clear and to say, well, these people are violating my rights. I don't have to, because it can drive you crazy if you, don't, if you don't have any type of way to account for yourself. You know, people saying, telling lies on you all well, the time. Well, to answer your question, like that, Deputy uh, Perez will allow you Unless indicated by the judge, or unless you make an overt action towards the deputy, or maybe towards the judge, or any of the staff, Deputy Perez is a trained uh, deputy. He will allow you to speak in, in the in the courtroom as long as you're not um, making any type of threats towards the judge, or as long as the judge does not look at the deputy and say, "This this is enough." Okay. Let me tell unless you, you make an overt thing. So this deputy professionally was allowing you to say what you had to say. Because he is not going to interfere with the case because you have a matter that you want to say. That's right. If, when the judge indicates to the deputy, she's done. That's time for you to leave the courtroom. And that's what the deputy did. So no, that's, that's not what happened. What well, you happened? walked up according you walked out. Yeah, but what happened is that they lied. The judge, Perez, they lied and said I was disrupting the court. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you what happened verbatim. The judge said, OK, I'm going to call the next case. And I said, hold on a minute. Can I have some equal judicial procedural latitude as you're affording the defendants? And at that point, that's when Perez said, pick up your stuff and get out, blah, blah, blah. So to me, that is not disruptive at all. So before we can conclude this uh, recording,